What was the most worrying letter you've ever gotten in the mail? Back when we were in the process of fostering our middle kid, I got a letter saying that his biological grandmother was going to be fighting for custody. We had never heard of her before. My son was placed with us at 7 months old, and we got this letter shortly after his second birthday. We were starting to move forward with the adoption process to make it final. We ended up going forward with the custody battle. At the time, our state gave preference to biological families. Even though we were the only parents our son had ever known, there was a chance that he would be leaving our family to go live with a woman he had never met before. After a couple of months, his grandmother ended up dropping the case. We agreed to have meetings with her, but she wasn't interested. My son is 10 now, and we haven't heard from her since then. It's still kind of crazy to imagine him not being in our lives. That letter was one of the scariest things to ever happen to our family. When I was 16 I had a car accident, an elderly man pulled out in front of me, and I t-boned him pretty hard. I walked away, but he was pretty fucked up, and spent a lot of time in hospital. He was clearly at fault, I had witnesses that supported my claim, that he just pulled out in front of me leaving almost no time to stop. Insurance paid out, and I got on with my life. Three years later I received a letter from his lawyers claiming well over a million dollars in damages, outlining all the horrendous medical issues the gentleman had due to the accident. I was distraught and thought my life was over. Had visions of being dragged through the courts, and of being portrayed as a monster, essentially what the letter suggested. I took the letter to a lawyer and she asked, did his insurance pay you out? Yep they had. Turns out that's an admission of guilt, and they had no case. She wrote a letter and I never heard another thing about it. I still feel bad for the old guy, who would almost certainly be dead by now. I feel terrible that his final years were spent in pain and in huge financial strain from all the medial procedures. But ultimately there was not a lot I could have done to avoid it. The letter from Prindalo saying I was going to be prosecuted for downloading porn. Apparently legit legal firm. Legit movie title that I may have downloaded. Ahem. Legal letter from cable company saying they'd been subpoenaed. Fuck. 30k in court or I could settle for about 3k. Spent a few weeks trying to figure out what to do, answering increasingly aggressive phone calls and emails. How to explain to family and friends that I downloaded teen, redacted, holes, redacted vi. Then I found out it was a probably a scam. Told them I lawyered up and they could come get me. Then spent the next 3 years watching their business model implode as the courts and the FBI caught wind of what they were doing. My second Harvard rejection letter. I thought they rejected me so hard they had to send two rejection letters to make their point. Got a notice for a toll evasion with a picture of a car that looked like mine, had the same license plate and state, but I knew it wasn't mine and couldn't have been my car. I had my car with me that day and wasn't in that area. Turns out someone found my car, manufactured license plates with my plate number and likes to evade tolls on my behalf, I was able to prove it thanks to reddit, and pointing out the fonts were wrong in the picture. I have since returned my plates, and have a receipt, that I surrendered my plates and it's on my DMV abstract, that I surrender my plates. The supervisor at the DMV showed me his computer screen, but to this day I still get toll evasion notices and fines I get to try and defend myself again. It's easy, but also a pain in the ass. So far it's happened in 4 states about 7 times total. I've moved since, and have another new set of plates from another state. So hoping it stops. I once got a letter asking if I was the father of a kid in my state, who had my first and last name. When I called the number on the letter though, the kid was 7, and I'm 19 at the time. Sadly, I did not lose my virginity at 12. I received a letter after donating blood years ago with a big personal and confidential and important on it. Letter states I had a false positive on the necessary HIV screening. It had huge markers insisting I did not have HIV, but they were required to notify me. Apparently certain autoimmune diseases, which I have, can cause the pre-screen to test false positive, but after all additional testing, they confirmed it was negative. Considering I had no risk factors besides medical procedures, it was a huge heart attack day for me. Took a while for me to calm down and a few more blood tests. 
I once got a letter from my local power utility telling me I owed over $900 and that this was my third and final warning before they shut off my power. Holy shit. What the fuck? What did I do? I've been paying bills. Oh shit oh shit. Then I read the address on the envelope. That's how I found out my neighbor was going into foreclosure. The mailman missed delivered mail and I just opened it assuming it was mine without ever reading the address on the envelope. The second most worrying was from the same power utility for a $700 bill in a single month alleging I used 3 months worth of gas in a single hour on a single random Tuesday afternoon. The beta was busted. I had to pay it while they investigated. But it was nice having no power bill for 3 months in a row once they decided that it was a mistake on their end. I'm Brooke at one positive, which long story short means my chances of developing breast cancer are 85% and I'll be getting a mastectomy at some point. However, because I'm only 22, they won't do any kind of scans or tests yet, which is fine, whatever. But I went to patient first sometime last year for bronchitis, and they did a chest ray. A week or two later, I got a letter in the mail that basically said, please give us a call immediately regarding the following test, chest ray. My first thought was that there was a lump or some kind of visible mass in my breast that they were able to see. Turns out they just wanted to tell me that the actual tech looked at my ray too and wanted to confirm that nothing was wrong. A letter from the Serbian army telling me that, now that I was of legal age I was to report for duty. But then I remembered I'm a Canadian citizen, and that they can suck it. But still was worried, because I had a trip planned to Serbia, and wasn't sure if they could just keep me there when I tried to leave. At 17 years old, I was summoned to court for cyberbullying charges, after breaking up with a girlfriend for cheating on me. I sent her a facebook message, after she admitted to cheating on me, saying how could you be so heartless to cheat on me during your aunt's wedding. I counter pressed for the same charges, since I had a slew of messages from her where she was telling me how worthless I am, and how I should end my life. Poor girl wasn't expecting the judge to rule a restraining order in my favor that day. It all started after a week at a college in Upstate Nye. I was up there with a friend for a concert, a concert that I don't remember. I got incredibly drunk as did my friends and none of us remembered anything. A week later I woke woken up by one of my parents who was tearing into me and wondering what happened one my little vacation. I claimed ignorance and my parent pulled a letter out from behind their back that had the crest of said college as well as its name. As the message went on, I got more and more worried, but luckily the letter didn't go into detail. However, it did say that I'm banned for life from said college, and if I'm ever caught on their property again I will be subject to at least a $250 fine for trespassing. 10 years ago I received a handwritten letter without a return address. The letter referenced a partnership the sender had with a drug dealer and we happened to have the same name. Their business had obviously gone south and now, the sender, wanted payback on his one-time friend who was not me. I brought the letter to the police, and they said there was nothing they could do, since there were not any direct threats made. A week goes by and another letter shows up, this time it includes a tape. The sender goes into detail about how his ex-partner screwed him over, and how his revenge will be swift. He ended it by saying that he is a butcher, and I'm going to find out how skilled he is with his carving knife. This time when I brought the letter to the police, they took action. The sender meant to deliver it to you slash Chris Mihanaya bitch who lived in the town over. He obviously didn't take much consideration to send it to the right person. The police told me they took care of it, and I never received any threats again. I received a letter of acceptance to a prestigious paid internship that would have seriously kickstarted my career. I cried, I told my parents, I went out to celebrate with my friends. A week later, I got a letter stating the first letter was an error and I hadn't been accepted after all. The thing is, I had kept my application a secret, so I wouldn't have to tell my friends and family the bad news if I didn't get in. Then after I told everybody, I had to tell them all that I was, in fact, a giant loser with no career. An eviction notice, actual court papers, for non-payment of rent. I just about lost my mind, rent was paid a day late, I had told my landlord it would be, and there wasn't an issue, and deducted from my account and everything, late fee paid too. Never got a notice posted, or sent to me. 
I frantically called my landlord, and they didn't pick up. Emma held the office and they seemed confused, they said my account looked good and there would not be an eviction. I had to send a picture of the eviction papers I got, before they took me seriously, and had the eviction case dropped. <laughs> Apply for life insurance, and about 4 weeks later a letter showed up in the mail from them period, when I pulled it out of the envelope it indicated that I had tested positive for HIV fell to my knees and let out a strangled scream, then turned the piece of paper over and noticed that it was a negative HIV test on the back. The cheapest at the insurance company used the same piece of paper with two different forms on the front and back which resulted in me calling the president of the insurance company and inviting him to duck himself with something long and pointy. When I was 8 I got a birthday card from someone that claimed to be my uncle Jim, whom I'd never heard of before, and he wrote an oddly specific letter about my family and my life. This was less than a week after we had been learning about stranger danger in school, and I was terrified, so I showed my mom and that's when I lead uncle Jim had just been released from prison after serving 20 years for meth manufacturing. I've lived in my place for over 3 years, and at least twice a week we receive mail addressed to a former tenant, either to his name directly, or to his business, guy's last name, computing, LLC, from the eyes and various bill collectors, many with increasingly urgent and threatening past due and open immediately notices on the envelopes. We made his former roommate, who gave us a tour of the place, before we signed the lease, aware of the situation, and she said something like yeah. I'm pretty sure he knows about it. We've never opened any of them, but I'm pretty sure, whenever they track this guy down, he is going to be in some deep shit. It was a letter I was included in. During college, roommates GF's parents received a letter informing them that their daughter was dating a black man, my roommate, and that they had been engaged in sexual activities. He told them to ask Theba GD if they needed confirmation. Come to find out that the person who wrote the letter had been watching her and her three friends at their house for months. He'd followed her to our house and found out where we lived. Found out both of our names. Additional creep factor, he wrote this shit on an old fashioned typewriter. He also discussed how the GF wouldn't be judged well during the end of days due to her behavior. It made me feel gross that he thought I would totally be on board with ending their relationship because I obviously didn't want interracial dating either. They got a restraining order. I've gotten two terrifying letters in my life. One I've already talked about here. The other was a bill for dollar sign 3k from the eyes regarding a filing from 4 years ago. I was absolutely broke at the time and this was pretty much going to end me. Side note, keep all tax documentation forever. Hours of work and phone calls later, I was able to reassemble most of my tax documentation from that year in question, and got my bill down to $340. But it cost so much time and stress my god. It took months to resolve. Safe to say though, nothing good comes out of that devil box by the road in my experience. For 6 years a couple times a year I would get a letter addressed to me, even though I moved. Every time same thing. From, court blah blah in Texas. Dear Mrs. we are writing on behalf of ABC, because you haven't paid child support you owe dollar sign why 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 dollars. We will continue to try and get in touch with you, and send people to contact you. We know you have moved, and will continue to collect the money owed. Please contact us to make payment blah blah blah. I was 17 when this started, and I'd never been to Texas, still haven't. Certainly wasn't me they were after, but they were so persistent over so many years, and four different addresses in three cities. Thankfully they stopped, and I can hopefully stop worrying about being arrested or something. I was injured, while working for a large shopping company and required surgery. Now, I was only a seasonal employee, so I knew I was not going to be able to return to work. I was still on workers compensation, since it happened on the job. About 2 weeks in, I receive a letter from the company telling me I had been terminated. It turned out to be an automatic form letter that was not meant to go out to me, but I was planning to work for them again later in the year, seasonally again, so I was worried that I would not be able to be rehired. I once got a death threat. It was something straight out of a movie. All of the words were spelled out with magazine clippings, and it had pictures of dead people pasted all over it. It said something to the effect of I know everything. 
I will expose you, and then you will die. Needless to say, it scared the shit out of me. I picked up the phone to call the police, when I suddenly realized that the envelope was actually addressed to my ex, and was marked return to sender. Some medical lab sent me a $90 or so bill for a test I never asked for that was just labeled experimental therefore insurance wouldn't help me with it. I still had to pay it, and to this day, have no idea what it was for. All they would tell me was that it was because I wanted birth control. I blame the government being ridiculously unfair to us responsible ladies. Give us that shit like Advil. Goodness knows the population needs it.